everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make the level for your game. Now as you can see I'm back in my project, uh, well we can actually delete the reference uh, Suzanne that we added in. We have our camera, our camera parented to our player, a player who moves along the, um, the Y axis 0.10 every update, every frame. And uh, that's where we left off, so we're going to make the level like I said. Now I'm in my visual coding tab that I set up here so we can go back to our basic layout. Press N to remove the sidebar. I'm going to press Shift A and add a cube. There we go. I'm going to press numpad 1 so I can go into uh, my side view. And I'm going to press G and Z to move my cube down. Something like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we want to scale it up because we want it to be a sort of um, sort of a path. So we're going to press S, Y and scale it on the Y axis, something quite big. In the camera view you can see that it was well, going way out the frame here. So we can press G, Y to move it along the Y axis. Something like that, sort of stylized uh, sort of style where you can see the beginning. Okay, so now that we have this nice platform we can see that um, well we'll be able to see that when we press play it actually just moves the cube forward without touching it so it's it's fake in physics we don't actually have any physics applied uh, you just think that the cube will in the longest uh, so well this is a bit boring okay this is you know a long cube a rectangle so we're going to add some uh, imperfections to this, we're going to add some bumps and things like that. Uh, now I want to keep this sort of uh, uni or not uniform, I want to keep this, well I'll show you. I'm going to press Control R while in edit mode. Well, you've seen the loop cut, uh, a loop cut appears and when we use a mouse wheel, we can add multiple loop cuts. I'm going to go with a number like this one. And uh, now we have a bunch of loop cuts, now we want to keep this as low poly as possible and I'll tell you why in a minute. So we can add another loop cut somewhere around here and I'm gonna add a sort of yeah, about there. About there seems good to me. With the face selection tool enabled so like I was saying with the face selection tool here I'm gonna select the top face I'm gonna zoom in a bit press E to extrude and extrude it mm, quite big like that I'm actually going to do another one on the uh, side here. And I'm going to press E and extrude it. Something, yeah, something like that. So they're not at the same height and scale, so it gives a bit of diversity. That's good. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing uh, further along here. I'm going to press Control R, add the loop cut about here, base selection tool, and I'm going to extrude uh, this side, I think. Yeah this side and we're going to actually do another one just here face selection tool and extrude the top here and the, I'm going to do the bottom for once ok, extrude the bottom like that and now you can see we have a bit of diversity in our terrain in our platform and as you can see if we press if we press play it's compiling up here as you can see we have our cube that's moving forward, although it's extremely slow. See, our um, platform has got no physics. So, uh, first thing we need to do is augment the speed of the player. By doing that, we're going to select the translate object speed to 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.001. And now when we press play, you will be able to see that our cube is moving very slow. Let's augment it a bit faster to something like 1. Now you can see that cube is moving really really fast. <laughs> so we can put 0 0.05. Okay, I think that should do. 0 0.05 and that moves at a relatively good speed. And um, well, as you can see, the cube is moving forward, but it has no collisions with this uh, platform. It has no interactions. So I'm going to fix that right away by um, adding a, uh, going, selecting the, actually, 
Select the platform, go to the Physics Properties tab, apply a rigid body, uh, rigid body, add it as a passive type, and set it to Mesh. Now the reason we use Mesh is because we have a low poly model with very few vertices. And uh, if we added it into a box, for example, you can see a representation of the collision domain, which is uh, not what we want. As you can see, the collisions would be around these four, um, these six faces, which is not very good. And none of these of uh, collision boxes would do. So we need to use the actual physics of the uh, terrain of the, um, uh, the, the, the platform itself. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my word. So as you can see, we now have physics set to passive for this one, and we need the same for the player. So we can set the physics to active. Uh, that was it was fine, and set this to a box because we are using a box, obviously. And uh, one last thing I'm going to do is in the sensitivity tab, we're going to augment the uh, collision margin just a slight little bit to about 1, and we're going to set the friction to 1 as well. We're also going to augment the damping, okay, and the rotation to 1 as well. And this should be good to go. And I'm just going to clean my project, and play it is currently compiling. And we'll see what it looks like in a minute. We have collisions, everybody. Congratulations. Now, as you can see, it's very shaky. And that's because our camera is actually parented with our cube. So it's moving with the same uh, rotations and everything as the um, cube. And uh, since every frame is trying to get forwards of 0 0.05, it's constantly moving and shaking. So we can fix that right away. What we're going to do actually is we're going to select the cube, then we're going to shift press select camera, right click, press parent, clear parent. Now this is, I guess it's sort of a waste because we previously parented the object, but you'll see it will make more sense. If we go down to this um, player tab, we have our rotation, our translation of the object, of the cube object. Let's actually select these two nodes, press Shift D, and this time instead of the um, object, the object in question, like I explained previously in the video, instead of the object being a cube, which is parented to this, we're actually going to select the eyedropper and select the camera. So now the camera will be moving at the same speed as the actual cube. When we compile this and run it, you'll be able to see that the camera itself gets uh, continues moving when the cube stays stuck, so we don't have that crazy camera shake. And also this helps a lot, so we can add a on death screen so this, the game will restart when the player exits the frame, but that is a subject for a different video when we've finished uh, the basics of the game. So um, let's actually save this blend file and we can see that now we are almost done. Uh, the only thing that we are going to do now is to apply shaders as in uh, textures to our scene. Now we can go into the render um, viewport render. We're gonna first of all add the world to white so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna take the strength down a little bit and we can add a new texture to the platform. We're gonna set it to a principled BSDF because it's the default and it works. And we're gonna set it to a sandy sort of orange color. Looks good. And we set the cube to a I don't know a, a light blue I think that looks good. Similar. Like that. Okay and if we run the scene now you will see that it will be much um, much better for your eyes. <laughs> it will look much better. There we go. Uh, although we can see that the uh, shape of the actual cu cube is... we can't really see the, the, the details of where the, um, the cube is. It looks like a, a big 2D image. So to fix that, we're actually going to do, go to the Properties tab. We're going to press on Color instead of a white background. 
we're going to add a environment texture which is a HDRI. Although instead of using the HDRI, we're going to open up a image. And I'm going to use this default uh, icon.png because I like it. <laughs> I'm going to set the uh, visit uh, the light in the strength to two, and when we press um, in one tab, we can press play. And when we do that, we get a pretty interesting result. As soon as it compiles, as you can see it, you can see the fine details, and we have a beautiful pinkish background I think we should make the cube a little darker but as you can see it's much easier to make out what's going on in the scene because it doesn't have a big 2d blob effect so we can actually actually make the color of this cube a little darker so we can have a bit more contrast in the scene and uh, now we are almost good to go and as you can see when we move around the image is projected now you can use any sort of image you want I thought this had a pretty good effect so I decided to keep it I'm going to save this to project and I'm going to end this video here now we've made our platform we've added physics to it and we've moved the camera and next video I'm going to show you how to actually control your platform to install the main mechanisms of your game and the main mechanisms will be when you click the screen the object is rotated uh, 90 degrees on each side so you have to avoid getting blocked because if you get blocked then you obviously move backwards uh, into the scene and when you move out this camera then you die we're also going to add enemies like spikes and also coins so you can buy different sort of skins and things like that different characters we'll add a score system and all that good stuff and so I hope you're excited because I am and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, because I did, <laughs> making it, anyway. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.